Please enjoy the following 2019 Easter service message entitled, Jesus the Ultimate Avenger. Within this message, please be aware that the included video does contain graphic content and images as reenactment of the many ways Jesus was treated on the day of his crucifixion. Therefore, viewer discretion is advised. Immediately following the enclosed video to the message, the next voice you will hear will be that of Pastor Howard Sanders delivering the Easter message. We pray you be blessed. Praise Jesus Christ as the greatest avenger, amen? Because he has the end game, amen? amen? So I want you, if you can look at this and open up your hearts and look for God to, as we're going to be dealing with the sacrifice that Christ did. Let me tell you, a couple of things I want to say first is, Jesus was not this weak little person. Amen. That we see in the pictures that look like, Ugh. okay? He was a carpenter. He was. A, he came and he came in. He, he was a man. Amen. And God formed. Amen. Yes. He, and, and, and he and he was strong. You gonna see all the stuff that he went through for us. Everybody say for me. For me. He took lashes on his back. He had to carry his cross on Golgotha's heel. For me. Everybody say for me. For me. So I want you to see this. Let's go. You're wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquity, by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah 53, turn it up, please.
give life to your mortal members. Amen? Amen. amen. Give me to our slideshow. Amen? Slice, please. Hallelujah. I know that's a solemn scene. Amen. It's a serious scene. It's hard to even, uh, you know, but I think more than me reading about what he went through, seeing it. Amen. Of course, we know, um, for, you know, the, the accuracy of his ethnicity would may have not been its most accurate in that pit in the picture, praise God. But hopefully you look beyond that. Amen. I want you to see the beating that he took for you. Amen. I'm aware that, uh, again, he, uh, Jesus was from uh, northern Africa, which is we now call the Middle East. So he was I know how he looked in his color and his tone. So you got to look beyond the European style Jesus that they showed. Amen. But the beating is still the same. Are you with me? Amen. So I want to talk to you again about Jesus, the ultimate avenger. Amen. Everybody say Jesus, the ultimate avenger. Now, I know there's a the new avenger coming out and it's talking about in game. And I, and I thought about the ultimate avenger is Jesus Christ. I talked to you last year about heroes because he is a hero. Amen. So today I want to talk about. The greatest avenger because God, everything he did on the cross, avenged everything that the enemy tried to do to mankind just for me and you. Amen. So let's look. We're going to look in the book of Luke. Amen. We're going to look at the book of Luke. And let's open up in prayer. Father, we just thank you right now. For every person under the sound of my voice, I pray that each person knows that I'm not trying to gross them out. I'm not trying to make them sad. But Lord, we just want to get a real uh, revelation of what the Christ went through for us. We don't want to pretty it up, God, but we want to see exactly what you've done and what you're doing for us even now, Lord. In Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, we pray in, this, in these next few moments that we have that you would cause your word to come alive, quicken our mortal members that we may hear, that we may leave here transformed in the next level of our understanding of who you are. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many know God is good? Turn to, my, turn to your neighbor. Look them in their, in, their, in their beautiful eyes. Come on, turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. You look great today, but I got to let you know, Christ died for you. Amen. Find somebody else. Find somebody else. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, there you go. Look at me. Look at they looking at you. Amen. Find somebody. Say, I got you, Miss Victoria. Say, neighbor, you look great today. Amen. Christ died for you. He got up, so you got to get up. Amen. Amen. You got to know that. Amen. Turn with me to Luke chapter 23. We're going to do some reading today about the crucifixion. We've seen it visually. Now we're going to do some reading. Everybody say read. Amen. Okay. We're going to riff. Reading is fundamental. Amen. Hallelujah. And you can go home and read the whole chapter, the 23rd, 22nd chapter. Because we last week we dealt with Palm Sunday and everybody was cheering Jesus on. Hosanna, Hosanna. He was the greatest thing next to sliced bread. But then he began to declare the temple and to, to declare against the corruption with the money changers and dead religion with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the leadership of his day. And before he knew it, they were ready to kill him. They turned the hearts of the people because he was upsetting the status quo. Here's the thing. Jesus has come to break the status quo in my life. Did you hear me, church? Jesus has come to break the status quo in your life. Not just mine, but yours too. Amen? See, Jesus, by the end of the week, he had a lot of haters. Everybody say haters. But this is what I want you to get. If anything I want you to get, haters make you greater. Everybody say that with me. Say, haters... To make you greater. Hey, did anybody got any haters in their life? Any folk hating on you? Amen. Well, you better start thanking God for the haters because the haters make you greater. Amen. The haters are what take you to the next level because they cause the Christ to come out, out 
out of you. Amen. To rise up out of you if you are a believer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my goal today is to preach all of the hell out of you. Amen. Amen. So that we can get where we need to be in God. Amen. And experience heaven here on this earth. Luke chapter 23 verse 26 through 27. I'm in the English Standard Version and you'll find these words. As they led him away, talking about Jesus, they seized one Simon of Serene who was coming in from the country and laid on him the cross that carried behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of people and of a women who were mourning and lamenting for him. This is as on his road to Golgotha. He was carrying his cross and you see Simon Cyrene. Many believe he was a, of African American, I mean African descent. Amen. Helping carry the cross. There's there's people of color all throughout the word of God. Amen. Luke 23, 33 to 38. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, what? Forgive what did he say about his haters? His Father, what? Forgive them. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast, now look what the, look what the, the, what the people, the, the soldiers did. They cast lots to divide his garments. By this time, they had already put a crown of thorns on his head. He had already gone through his beating. He had been humiliated. 35th verse, and the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, he saved others, let him save himself. If he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of Jews, save yourself. And there was also an inscription over him that this is the king of the Jews. So the whole crucifixion was a mockery of who he is. And he went through that shame and bloodshed for us. For us. And let's make it more personal for me. Everybody say for me. Jesus died for me. Luke 23, 44 through 47. And it was now about the sixth hour. And there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And when the sunlight fell and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. And that's what we saw in the video. Then Jesus calling out with a loud voice said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit and having said this he breathed his last and now when the centurion saw when he had taken place he praised God saying certainly this man was innocent this morning we will be talking about the humiliation the suffering and the death of the Lord Jesus Christ and learn about the benefits we attain through his death though he was despised and rejected as it talks about in Matthew 21, he, Jesus came for a couple things. He came to deliver man from their evil ways. He came to deliver man from their sin. He came to save us from eternal damnation. And he came to bring us back into himself. Amen? Now, but man did not recognize and they rejected Jesus. Isaiah 53 and 2 says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. He grew up amongst them, amen? A root out of a dry ground. He have no form, no, no comeliness. And what we shall see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. Amen? This shows that he was not recognized as the true Messiah, even though he grew up amongst his own people. His doctrine was not welcome. His doctrine of truth and relationship was not welcome. Men preferred to continue in their sinful ways, and they had no place for God. Some may say, why? Well, Jeremiah 17, 9 lets us know why. The heart is deceitful above all things. How many know the heart is deceitful? And desperately wicked. Who can know it? Men fail to submit their lives to their maker because of their deceitful hearts. Amen? They fail to accept Jesus as the son of God. Real quickly, I'm going to go through the scourging one more time. We saw the video of it, but those that are watching by Facebook Live, and you may have not been able to see everything, but I have a diagram of the beating that he took for us, 39 stripes, each one for each sickness. The Bible, we say, and we quote, by the stripes of Jesus, we are made whole. Every stripe that he took on his back, for every disease that is known, amen? 
And so you see that the, the pieces on, the, on that whip that he was getting beat with was, had small bones and leather thongs and metal balls that would rip into his flesh and pull the flesh out of his back. Jesus went through that for us. You had a strong Roman centurion that was flogging him. And this would go on sometime for hours. Amen? Just beating me. Everybody say, for me. For me, I think you have to be informed, amen, to understand what he went through for us on the cross. We complain about having to come on Sunday. We complain about having to worship God and stand for Christ. But think about what he's done for you. Amen. It's back. Let's keep going. It says John 3, 16, for God so loved who? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That wasn't enough that he just went through a beating. Then he had to carry his cross. Amen. He had to carry his cross after they beat him. The cross weighed anywhere from 75 to 125 pounds. Amen. 34 to 57 kilograms for all those that are in metric system. It, it was from 5 feet to 6 feet long 1.5 1.8 uh, meters amen and he had to carry that up the path amen it was in length six to eight feet where they were going to hang him over his head to mock him even more say so here lies the king of the jews they didn't stop there to get him on that cry cross they had to put a nail right between his radial artery and the ulnar artery and his median nerve and they hammer that nail through all of his flesh and he's bleeding you know how you feel when somebody just hits you touch you wrong you crying well he had a nail five to seven inches long 13 to 18 centimeters Approximately one inch in diameter going through his wrist and his ankle. Everybody say for me. Come on, everybody say for me. For me. He did it for me. Not only through his ankles, he had it through his foot. Right and left. It's metatarsal. Right between his second toe and his third toe, Roman policy where they would put the nail right there between his metatarsals. And literally, you, when you were on the cross, the person would not die from all of this. They would die from a fixation because all the blood would be, they, they would, it would they, as they leaned on that cross and they couldn't hold themselves up, their lungs would collapse and they would suffocate. Everybody say, for me. For me. Another view of the foot. Let's go to John chapter 1. Are you getting the picture? John chapter 1, verses 11 through 12. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. I, I pray, not only do you believe God, but that you receive. We learned this on Wednesday night. You got to believe, receive, and then reciprocate. Everybody say that. Believe, receive. And then reciprocate. What do you mean, Pastor? Once you got it, you got to go give it to somebody else. You just can't sit down on this love. You can't just sit down on this good news. You got a purpose in your heart. You're going to make a difference. But as many received to them, gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Even while he was in the Mount of Olives praying, he says this, amen. House of Israel rejected the Son of God by hanging him out on the cross. They did not know that it was his primary duty to die for, for, for sinners. Jesus was born to die. He was born to die. Amen? Matthew 27 lets us know that he was beaten. He was stripped naked after which they put a scarlet robe on him. Can you imagine after he was beaten, he's bleeding. Then they throw a, a, a scarlet robe on him and it's sticking to his body. They placed a crown of thorns on his head. To mock him. They spit on the son of God. And they rejected him. 
He was mocked, disgraced, and was given vinegar instead of water. Theologians and historians confirm that he was beaten. It's in history that it was a, a, a figure named Jesus. Amen. Beyond, he was beaten beyond recognition. Why? All for you and for me. And he never complained. The scripture said he didn't say a mumbling word. Well, I'd like to propose to you that he did this for us. Amen. He did this. He got beaten. He got the crown of thorns. He got spit on all for us because he saw Howard the second. He saw Howard the third. He saw Chris and Ace and Victoria and Arlise and Latoya and Brian and Miss Gracie. He saw you. He saw Tara and he saw Jean and he saw Vanetta and he saw Leon. He saw Gabe and he saw Alex, he saw all of us. Much like sometimes parents, you do what you do, not for yourself. You do it for your children because you see their potential. You see their, their, what God's going to do in their life. Amen? Amen. Let's keep going. Jesus gives us the double. Jesus gives us the devil. This is how he shows us he's the greatest avenger. I don't know if you know any great hero, any great hero, and I said heroes, makes him a hero. Let me say that again. Heroes, H-E-R-O-S-E, -E, makes him a hero. Amen? And we said earlier, haters make you what? Make you stronger too, but I said greater though. Amen? Haters make you what? Greater. Some of you got haters in your life. Some of you, how many family members can be haters sometimes because they may not see your divine potential? How many friends ex, can, can be haters? Are y'all with me? Haters make you greater. Do you understand that these people were cheering him on a day, 24 hours before they crucified him? Haters make you greater. You're identifying with the Lord Jesus Christ, especially when you're living with God. Amen. We're going to look at this principle and I'm closing with this of the double because Jesus paid it all for us. But you need to understand this principle because God, uh, Jesus was a, a son of the scriptures, a son of the word. He understood this, that this was, and, and the children of Israel after his death, they got to understand what he was doing and what his life meant. Everybody say the double. Say, Jesus paid it all. Come on, that's not everybody. Say, everybody say, Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Amen. Let's keep going. Are y'all getting something out of this? Hey, raise your hand if you're getting something. Amen. Okay. Isaiah 40, verse 2. It says, speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is what? Her warfare is what? Her warfare is what? And we're talking about the end game here, amen? That her sin is what? Forgiven. She has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Amen. That's something to praise God about. Amen. Come on, give God some praise right now. Some of you don't understand what that means. She has received a double portion of all her sins. What is the giving the double? A custom was instituted in Israel to relieve those suffering from outstanding and overwhelming debt. How many know we had an overwhelming debt of, debt of sin? Amen? Amen? We had AIDS. We had an acquired immune deficiency to sin. But Christ died for our sins to give us the double so that we can have a better life and live. The custom went like this with the double. If you had an outstanding and overwhelming debt with no hope of paying it back, you could write on a scroll all your debt owed and to whom it was owed and nail it to the door of your dwelling. This was the custom. You did this in hope that a wealthy and compassionate person would happen by to see the debt and be moved with compassion. Everybody say compassion. To pay your debt. If this occurred, the benefactor would take the bottom of the scroll and double it over the hiding and, and, and causing to hide the debt and then write on the scroll 
paid in full to assure you the debt was no longer in your hands, but in the hands of someone who would pay it all. The custom of doubling the scroll and hiding the debt, then writing paid in full was called giving the double. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, Jesus Christ gave us the double. Amen. Amen. Understand this. Understand this. It's an unpayable debt. It's an unpayable debt. You can't do anything to, to pay the debt that God has done for us. Amen? But you can live for him. Amen? Let's keep going. Psalms 130 and 3 says, Lord, if you kept the record of our sins, aren't you glad that God doesn't hold your sin over your head? Come on, talk to me, church. I know you're looking pretty this morning. I know you got your matching outfits on. You're looking all nice and shiny and greased up, amen, and clean. But aren't you glad that people can't see all of you? I'm not talking about the good parts. I'm talking about when you have them bad thoughts. But look what God said, Lord, if you kept the record of our sins, who, O Lord, could ever survive? Romans 3, 23 says, for all have what? sin and fall of short of the glory of God. That's from, the, that's from the, the, the streets to the pulpit. Amen? We're all of sin. I don't care how, try, how, try, how clean we try to make ourselves seem. Isaiah 40 and all the prophecy of the coming of Messiah, Jesus Christ, who's come to give us the double for all of our sins. That's what all Isaiah 40 talks about. It's the double portion that God's coming to give us. Amen? If you can imagine this, just the scroll of your life saying, Paid in full. Debt no longer owed. Debt no longer owed. Amen. Amen. That's something to clap about. Amen. See him paying it. That's what Resurrection Sunday is about. That's what Easter is about. It's about not about the bunny. <laughs> not about looking clean and smelling good. It's about honor him every day of your life because he paid it all. Colossians 2 and 14 says this. He canceled the debt which listed all the rules we failed to follow. He took away that record with his rules and nailed it to the cross. Aren't you glad about it? Jesus bore our sins and shame of sin on the cross. He cried out, it is finished or paid in full. By his grace, we've all received the double. Amen. Say, neighbor. I got my double. Amen. I pray, that's, I pray that's real for you. I pray that before you leave here, amen, you don't have to wait till we pray, that you make sure that you got your double. You got everything that God has for you in your life. He died so that you don't have to go through in this life. You don't have to make it alone. Amen. Look at Luke 24. Luke 24. And we're closing with this. Luke 24. We're going to close with the word. Is that all right? Are you getting something out of this? Say, so neighbor, I got my double. Amen. I can get up because he got up. Say that like you mean. Say, I can get up because he got up. One more time. I can get up because he got up. What do you mean? I can get out of my bad situation. Amen. I can get up in my marriage and make, guess what? Make it happen in, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I, I can get up for my children and pray and keep interceding till I see a breakthrough. Amen? Amen. I can get up because he got up. Amen. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, 4, verses 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week, See, in the end with him down on the cross. Amen. And he says, I, I, I got this game. Man. The end game is all with me. Amen. This game of life I already seen. Game over. Amen. I, I must win. Yes, I'm going to die. I have to go through this death, but I will rise again. And because he rose, you're going to rise. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, 
They went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They were looking to see a body. They were looking to do a burial service and, and adorn the body. And they found the stone wet, rolled away from the tomb. But when, but, but when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. Now you had Mary Magdalene there. You had Mary, the, father, the mother of Jesus there. Amen. Isn't that awesome how he, he revealed himself to the ladies first? Come on, ladies. Y'all ought to be amen. Come on. Can I have some woman power in here? Amen. I mean, no, God will speak to women. Amen. Amen. Sometimes he'll speak to you first. Oh, God help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. Can you hear God to whomever he speaks? Oh, he may be using a donkey this morning, so I hope you can hear God. Amen? Hallelujah. God help the church to get beyond sex. Help us to hear God. I'm telling you, son, if we can't hear God in here and see that there's no neither male or female in the church, how's the world going to figure it out? Are y'all with me? There's a greater call for us. If we can't figure out this race thing in here, how's the world going to figure it out? Judgment got to begin in the house of God. Now notice, second verse, they found the stone, what? Rolled away. They found the stone, rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel, angels. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said, see, one thing that God does, he reveals himself to women because they go straight into worship. Some of us would have been running. They get afraid, they start worshiping. <laughs> you know, you had Joshua, he worshiped. There was a couple Moses, he would worship. But that's a special kind of man, amen? Tender heart, but a lot of us, I mean, so we would have been gone. Amen, we'd be calling the Ghostbusters, paranormal activity. We try to get on the television show and God trying to reveal himself to us. While they were perplexed by whole two men stood by them in doubt, and as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, they went straight into worship, afraid. How many know some of you got to worship God afraid? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, some of you got to worship God afraid. Amen. What do you mean? In the, uh, the crisis, the situation's happening, you still got to keep worshiping God. You can't stop coming to church because you're going through a little bit of problems. Help me, help me, like bub. Amen. You can't stop serving God because the situation looking difficult. What, what if the slaves would have done that? <laughs> uh, you know, you some of, some of us are here, white and black, because of some slaves' prayers. Praying for a more perfect union. Praying that this thing that this constitution says would come to pass. Well, they would have given up when somebody was whooping their back. Somebody talked to you wrong on the job. You ready to quit. Are y'all with me? Somebody look at you wrong in the church. You ready to go running. Come on. Dig in men, women of God. Sixth verse. This is why do you seek the living amongst the dead in the fifth verse? He is not here, but has what? He has what? Risen. Say it with power. He has what? Risen. Risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee. That the son of man. Understand this. He told him this. Turn to your name. Say, neighbor, he told him. He told him what was going to happen. Hey, man, this won't new. He told him. That the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And then they remembered his word. Have you ever had God tell you something and you forget that he told you? And then when you find yourself in a situation, you're like, ah. That's why it's important to journal and write things down that God speaks to your heart. As you go through those seasons of darkness, verse 9, returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now they went back to the disciples, the eleven. Peter was out somewhere fishing, depressed. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and the Mary, the mother of James and other women with them 
who told these things to the apostles, the called out ones. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they, and they did not what? See, the choice is today, will you believe? Will you believe, will you receive, and will you reciprocate? Will you believe, will you receive, and will you reciprocate? 12th verse, and we about to go home. But Peter rose. <laughs> thank God for Peter. Everybody say thank God for Peter. See, Judas was killed, so at 11, I'm sorry, Peter was still there. I misspoke there. Peter rose and ran to the tomb. He had to see it for himself. And stooping and looking in, he saw the linen clothes by themselves. I understand there was a centurion guard there that was there all night. I understand that he would have been killed if he just let somebody come get that body. And he went home marveling at what happened. See, they understood this. Everybody say, Jesus rose again. Jesus rose again. Amen. Say, I, I'll get up because he got up. Let's pray. Stand to your feet, everybody. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for all that you've done. For us. And Lord, hopefully with the video, with the word, the scriptures, and the words that I tried to articulate, you got the message across, Holy Spirit, that we need you. That you love us so much that you sacrificed it all. You sacrificed your dear son for us. And even when he was in the olive garden of olive and he was praying, Lord, let this cup pass. He didn't end the prayer there. He, he ended with saying, Lord, not my will, but your will. And he began to follow on the path that you had for him, God. I pray for each person under the sound of my voice, each person on YouTube, each person on Facebook Live. I pray for those that are watching me right now, God, that you would get them on the path that they need to be in you and commitment toward you, God. In Jesus' name.